What's up YouTube? Hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys are enjoying and benefiting from the videos that I'm making. If you are, then let me know in the comment section. And if there's anything else you want me to make a video on, again, you're always very welcome to let me know. So in the last two videos, we saw the basic concepts of trigonometry. In this video, we're going to build up on those concepts and do slightly more complex examples. And along with that, we're going to be covering actual questions that you may come across in past papers. So again, let's start with a very basic example. All right, so here's example one of today, where you're given the sine x equals to 0.5 and x is from 0 to 360. Normally at this point, the question is going to ask you to find all the values of x in this range, all right? Now, this, since the question has asked us to find all the values, that means we're likely to end up with more than one value. Now, the first thing you need to do is you need to be able to understand the question. So sine x equals to 0 0.5 basically means that there is some value of x for which sine of that value turns out to be 0 0.5. Some value or perhaps some values of x, right? So maybe there are some values of x for which the sine of those values turn out to be 0 0.5. Now our job is obviously to find, those, find that value or the values of x. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it out to you stepwise such that whenever you come across a question where you have a trigonometric function which is equal to a certain value and then your job is to find the value or values of those angles. So how should you approach that question? I'm going to lay, lay that out to you stepwise. So here's step number one. Now step one is that you should be able to identify the possible quadrants that you're dealing with. What you do is, the first thing that you do is you identify the possible quadrants in which this whole thing may be happening. So since we can see that sine x equals to 0 0.5 and this right here is positive, so that means the two quadrants that I'm likely to be in are the first and the second. By the way, in the last video, I forgot to mention that if you want to be able to memorize this ASTC, now we've all come up with different ways, but one way to memorize this would be to add sugar to coffee or this may sound offensive, but all science teachers are crazy. Not the bad crazy, like the good crazy, you know? So crazy in the sense like they're always thinking, they're always coming up with new stuff, that kind of crazy. So what, what this basically means is that sine x equals to 0 0.5, that means I may be in the first quadrant or I may be in the second quadrant. Now, what does that mean? That means this value of x may be in the first quadrant, meaning it could be an acute angle or this value of x could be an obtuse angle as well. So that, that was step one. Now what's step two? Step two is that you find alpha. What you do is you find alpha. Now alpha, the, how do you find alpha? There's a standard procedure for that. And for that, what you do is you take the sine inverse of whatever the value that you have after the equals to sign. And bear in mind, the inverse, the sine inverse that you're taking off is 0 0.5. Now, if hypothetically speaking, this were equal to minus 0 0.5, I would have still taken it as positive 0 0.05, right? So that alpha turns out to be positive. So alpha will turn out to be 30 degrees. I've done this before, okay? Don't freak out that I've memorized all of this. So since alpha is 30 degrees, that means that x could be something like this or x could be something like this, right? In the first quadrant or it could be in the second quadrant. Now, since we already know the value of alpha, let's just write 30 degrees here and let's just write 30 degrees here. Now, step one, step two, now finally, step three. Now, step three is simply that you find x or theta, right? In this case, I've taken it x, but it could have been theta as well. So how do you find x? Again, since we're gonna be starting from the positive x-axis or the positive horizontal axis, so and we're gonna be going in an anti-clockwise direction because the range of x is positive and we know from prior knowledge that positive means you go in an anti-clockwise direction. So that's 90, this is 180, 270, 360. So I'm gonna start from here and I'm gonna move in an anti-clockwise direction so this value we can see is the same as alpha. So that means one possible value of x is gonna be equal to 30 degrees. Now what about the other value? Again, I'm gonna start from the positive x axis or the positive horizontal axis. I'm gonna keep on going, keep on going till I touch this line. So this angle, what do you think this angle is gonna be equal to? 
Well, had I gone all the way here, this would have made a straight line. So this would have been 180 degrees. But then in that case, I would have had to come 30 degrees back. So that means I can do that by subtracting 30 from 180. So that's going to be equal to 150 degrees. All right, so this is how you solve a question like this, where you have a trigonometric function, which is equal to a certain constant. And your job is to find the value or values of x. All right, so I hope that's clear. Let's do another example. All right, so here we are with another example, example two. Okay, now. So step number one is that we're going to be identifying the possible quadrants in which this is likely to happen. So this, as you can see, cos of some value of x or perhaps values is negative. So that means that it can happen in definitely not the first, in the second or the third quadrant, right? Because these are the two quadrants where cos is going to be negative since sine, sine and tan are positive respectively. So that means one value of x could be here and the other could be here. So that's step one taken care of. Now step two is that we're going to find alpha. Now you and I are going to find alpha by taking the cos inverse of positive, yes, positive root 2 upon 2, right? Whenever you're finding alpha, you take the inverse of a positive value. So that is going to turn out to be 45 degrees, right? So that means the positive acute angle that this line is going to make with the horizontal axis is going to be 45 degrees each. So now finally, step three, where we're going to find out the values of x. Now we can see that there are going to be two values in this range from zero to 360. And we're also going to move in a positive, uh, in, a, in a counterclockwise direction because it's positive. So first value, I'm going to start from here. I'm going to keep on going in an anti-clockwise direction till I touch this line. Now this angle, since till here, a full straight line would have given me 180. 180 minus 45 is going to give me 135 degrees. So that's that. And then the next value is going to be 180 till here and then another 45. So 180 plus 45 is going to be equal to 225 degrees. So these are the two possible values of x for which cos is equal to minus root 2 upon 2. Now at this point, I should point out that if you want to be sure, if you want to, you know, like boost up your confidence and be 100% sure that you've done it correctly, I want you to evaluate what cos of 135 is equal to, right? And see what the answer is and then evaluate what cos of 2 to 25 is equal to and see what the answer is. And let me know what did you understand by this in the comment section, okay? So let's do a slightly more complex example. All right, so here we are back with another example. I should label this as example three. So let's read the question and get straight to it. So three tan x minus one equals to zero. Now this is slightly different from the two examples that we solved earlier in such a way that we'll have to do an extra step. What that extra step is gonna be is that we're gonna to have to write this nicely. What, what do I mean by nicely? So what do I mean by writing it nicely? I mean that we're gonna make tan x the subject. So if I make tan x the subject, in fact, let's not just skip all the steps. So let's make three tan x the subject first. So this becomes equals to one. And then if I make tan x the subject, this is gonna be equal to one over three, right? So this is what I meant when I said that we're going to write it nicely. So remember, before you can solve a question like this, it should always be in such a format that you have a trigonometric function and then equals to sign. Then after the equals to sign, you should have, a, you should have some constant value, some value. So what did I mean when I said that we're going to write this nicely? I meant that we're going to have our trigonometric function on the left-hand side and then an equals to sign and after that, some value, right? So you can see that this is now written very nicely. So again, this is carried forward as it is that x is from zero to 360. Now we can see that tan x is positive. So that means we are going to identify the quadrants. Now, what quadrants can we be dealing with here? We may be dealing with the first quadrant. Second, no, not very likely. In fact, not likely at all. Third, definitely, but not the fourth. So that means this value of x could be somewhere in the first quadrant and somewhere in the third quadrant. Now, what's the next step? The next step is that we're going to find alpha. So alpha is going to be equal to tan inverse of one over three, for which I'm going to need a calculator, which I don't have. So I should quickly go and get it. So the tan inverse of one over three turns out to be 18.4, 18.4 degrees. So that means that this angle could be 18.4. All right, now you should remember that although we give all our answers correct to three significant figures, all non-exact answers, Angles are always given correct to one decimal place, right? Irrespective of whether they're three significant or not, they, they will always be given correct to one decimal place. So this is 18.4 here, and this is 18.4 here. So now we're done with step two. Now we're gonna do step three. Now step three says that find x. Now how can, how can we do that? 
So again, we're going to start from here. We're going to go in an anti-clockwise direction. So the first value of x is going to be the same as alpha. So that's 18.4. There you go. Now the second value is going to be 180 till here and then another 18.4. So that's what uh, I can do that without a calculator. Uh, 198.4, yeah. 198.4 degrees. Now, as I said, that although this is not three significant figures, but since it's an angle, we will always give it correct to one decimal place. Now, again, at this point, I should mention that you should check your answers. How? By simply taking tan of 18.4 and see whether it's equal to 1 over 3. Well, it is very close to it. Now, remember, this 18.4 is rounded off to one decimal place, so you may not get the exact answer. And then also find out tan of 198.4. So that also turns out to be very close to 0 0.3333. So this is how you're going to solve a question like this. I hope it's clear. Now let's do uh, an even more complex question. All right, so here we are with example four in which we have tan square x, which is equal to one. Now, what does that mean? That means that first I need to write this nicely in the sense that we should have a trigonometric function and then we should have then a certain value. So first things first, I need to get rid of the square here. So how can I do that? What's the antidote of a square root? Well, I just gave the answer. What's the antidote of a square? It's square root. So we're going to take the square root on the left hand side and we're going to take the square root on the right hand side. So tan x is equal to 1 or don't forget that whenever you take the square root of a positive value, you get two answers plus minus 1, right? So what this does is normally at this point when we identify our quadrants, we look at a certain value which is either positive or negative. But here we have to take both of these values into consideration. So that means when I'm identifying my possible quadrants, that means I could be in the first quadrant because tan is positive, I could be in the first and third, but because the same function is also negative, since we don't know whether it's going to be positive one or negative one, so that means we could have, we could be in the second or the fourth quadrant. So that means our x or theta, well x in this case, and I should write out, I should point out that x is from zero to 360. So that means our theta or x in this question could be in all four quadrants, right? So we're done with step one. Now let's do step two. Step two is where you and I find out what alpha is. So alpha is going to be tan inverse of one. So tan inverse of one is 45 degrees. So that means 45 in the first, 45 in the second, 45 in the third, and finally 45 in the fourth. Now remember, this is the value of alpha. We are yet to find the value of x. So how can I find the value of x in the first quadrant? We can see it's going to be the same as alpha. So 45 degrees there. In the second, it's going to be 180 till here. And then we're going to go back 145 degrees. That's going to be 135 degrees. In the third, stop. So 180 plus 45 is going to be 225 degrees. And then finally in the fourth, let's keep on going, keep on going and then stop here. So 360 minus 45, which is equal to 315 degrees. So I hope that's clear. So remember, whenever we have a certain trigonometric function equal to a positive value, and at the same time, it could also be a negative value. So you have to take all four quadrants into consideration. And you can see that we have gotten four different answers. All right, so I hope that's clear. Let's do another example. All right, so here's the fifth and the final example of today's class. Now, this question may come off as, as a very strange question to you, such that you may be wondering that how come we're not able to solve this and why have I just left you hanging in the middle? So we're going to fix that. And we're going to fix that once we cover the graphs of these trigonometric functions, namely sine, cos, and tan, right? So here we have cos x minus 2 equals to 0. So cos x equals to 2 is how we're going to write it nicely such that we have trigonometric function equals to and then a certain value. So again, this means that we could be in the first or the fourth quadrant, right? So we've done step one. Now let's do step two. Now let's see what happens. Now what I want you to do is in your calculator, I want you to find out what cos inverse of 2 is and then tell me what the answer is. So you'll notice that you get something known as math error. Hmm. Now, why is that? Now, for that, you'll have to wait for the next episode of trigonometry in which you and I are going to learn how to sketch graphs of sine x, cos x, and tan x. Now, if you like this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also don't forget to share this video with all your friends, classmates, and whoever you think can possibly benefit from it. If there's anything else you want me to cover in AdMaths, let me know in the comment section below. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, take care. Allah Hafiz.